Welcome to this lesson on phase diagrams. The question of the day, what are two ways that you can change the phase of matter? I hope you said by adjusting either the temperature or the pressure. Phase diagrams track the temperature changes and pressure changes on a sample alongside its phase of matter. When we talk about data points on this diagram, if your data point falls on a line, it is going to indicate a phase change between two areas of that graph. Now, phase changes can occur at multiple different temperatures and pressures, which you will be able to see on a phase diagram. A phase diagram is kind of a Y shape. So if you think of a Y shape, you have the two and then you have the line down the middle, there is a spot right in the center and that is called the triple point. And that's kind of where chemistry meets magic. And that is where a substance can exist as all three phases of matter at the exact same time. It's really hard to achieve. You typically have to use some lab equipment to get right in that sweet spot, but that is, um, conducted by changing both the temperature and the pressure. This is the layout for a general phase diagram. All substances are going to follow this general format, but their specific lines are definitely going to wind up in different places. So this right here is that triple point that I was talking about. It's where a substance can be a solid, a liquid, and a gas all at the same time because we're at the sweet spot for temperature and pressure. When we are under decently high pressure and a low temperature, we are going to find ourselves looking at a solid. As that temperature increases, this is going to very easily become a liquid. And when we have a, a substance or a sample at a very low pressure, it is going to behave like a gas. Talking again about the phase changes, if you are in this solid region and you increase the temperature, of course, you would be sliding on the X axis. And in that case, well, solid to liquid, yes, you would be melting your sample. If you started in the liquid and you were decreasing the pressure, then you would, I'm sorry, decreasing the temperature, you would slide across this way and you would be freezing. If you have a liquid and you decrease the pressure, you are going to vaporize and your sample will be a gas. If you have a gas and you increase the pressure, you are going to condense to a liquid. The same is true over here. And this is how we look at substances. Again, for the most part, you have been looking at phase changes in terms of temperature changes, but it is now the time we are adding in pressure changes to our phase changes. At the high school chemistry level, we're not usually doing a lot of math regarding pressure changes on our um, samples and their phase of matter just because it's kind of difficult, but you should be able to use your graph reading skills to figure out what phase of matter you would have your sample be at a particular temperature and pressure. And truthfully, that is all. In the high school chemistry level, you are very rarely graphing these things. More often you are interpreting graphs. And in that case, you would just use your graph reading skills. You may need a little bit of these phase changes to help you out here, but I really don't see that being an issue for most high school chemistry students. So I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna leave it here. Um, please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I will see you there. Bye.